up to now we've created just one type of resource and that is the manufacturer. In this one what we're going to do is we're going to create another type of API resource and that will be a product and that will be related to our manufacturer with a many to one relationship. So we'll have many products to one manufacturer. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. Before we do that though, let me just tell you that uh, in between the last, the end of the last recording and this, the start of this one, I've actually created a Git uh, repository for this. And let me just tell you about the branching strategy that we're using here. So if we look at the branches, the last recording where we create the manufacturer, that was a branch called persisting data. And this one that we're working on now is gonna be called related resources. So if you want to actually go and get the code uh, from GitHub to check mine against yours, or if you just wanna download it for whatever reason, uh, you can find it here. So it's Gary Clark, API platform crash course. And if we look at the branches, you'll see here so far, we just have a main branch and a persisting data branch. So just trying to keep all the branches in sync with the lesson. So by the time you're watching this, you'll be able to see uh, the new branch, hopefully, which I've forgotten what I've called it already, uh, which is called related resources. So that should appear for you uh, on GitHub as well by now. Okay, let's actually start working on creating a product resource. So we're in the entity folder again. So product API source entity. I'll just create a new PHP class. And so the reason why, or one of the reasons why we're demonstrating it like this is so I can show you how a, the API platform uses IRIs or special ways of locating uh, related resources, which is pretty cool. So here we go, we've created a product. If you remember how we mark this as an API resource, we did it like this. API resource, so then you should see this use API platform core annotation API resource. And so now we have two different kinds of resources. Uh, this doesn't have any fields yet, so let's add some fields. I'll just go ahead and quickly do this behind the scenes. We have an ID, so that's just gonna be an auto, auto incrementing ID, just like we had with manufacturer. We have something called MPN, which is manufacturer part number. So uh, some products in the world of manufacturing, they have special uh, unique part numbers which help identify them. Uh, the name of the product, which will be a string. The description, which will also be a string. We'll, we'll make that a long text like we did for this, the description of the manufacturer. The issue date, so the date which the uh, product was issued became public and then we'll have manufacturer, which will be our reference to our manufacturer resource, which is um, the manufacturer of this product. If we come over to our user interface and refresh, we now see the uh, operations that we can perform on a product. However, at the moment, it's still useless to us because we haven't marked it as a doctrine entity, so we can actually save it to the database. And also, if we look at our product fields, because they're all private, and we don't have getters and setters for these yet, it won't be actually uh, recognized in the schema there on the user interface. So what we'll do first is we shall, we'll actually mark these as entity properties first. So what we need to do is first mark the class as an entity. Okay, so use doctrine ORM mapping as ORM, and then we shall say, that this is a product and it is an entity. Next, the idea of the product, what I shall do is I shall go and borrow from manufacturer because an auto incrementing ID, we've got all these three parts here which we need to remember. So no harm in borrowing from there, I think, rather than trying to remember. Okay, and so the next ones, we have manufacturer part number, which will be a string. So we just need to mark this as a column. And because we've uh, indicated that it's a string, then Doctrine ORM will be able to figure this out. The name of the product, exactly the same here. So we're just gonna say column, and that will default to a string. For this one, we're gonna say text. So column, and then type equals text. And so that will give us a long text because we need a few more characters for the description. Date of issue of the product. So this will be 
a column and we're going to say type equals date time. Okay, manufacturer of the product. So this is a little bit more complex. This isn't actually a column. This is a relationship that we're looking at here. Let me just make myself a little bit of space. And so that relationship will be a many to one. So what you do is you look at the actual entity that you're looking at at the moment, which is a product. There will be many products to one manufacturer. And so you need to say what will, what is the target entity that you're looking at here. So we say target entity equals manufacturer. Okay, great stuff. So now that we've actually created that relationship on the product, what I'm going to do is go over to the manufacturer and create an inverse relationship there. So on manufacturer, what we're going to do is create a products property. And then I'm going to say iterable products. So by saying iterable, it means it can be a iterable uh, kind of class, such as a collection, or it can be a array. So we're going to say private iterable products. And then in the annotations here, so first off, we'll say uh, a collection of products. And then this will be the available available products from this manufacturer. And as far as our doctrine entity annotations, instead of being a many to one this time, there will be one manufacturer to many products. So one to many. And then again, we say the target entity this time will be product. And then what we're going to say is mapped by, and this will be the field on our target entity, which is actually mapping to this manufacturer. So if you remember what we called that, we called it manufacturer. And I'm just going to move these onto separate lines just to give myself room to do this. And we're going to add a cascading strategy. So for example, when we delete this manufacturer, what do we, what do we want to happen? We want to delete uh, any related products so that we don't have any orphans in our database. So cascade equals persist. And we'll also say remove. And then what I'm going to do is going to go back to the product. And here we're going to do a similar thing, except instead of where we said mapped by, we'll say inverse by, and then this will be products. There's a couple more steps before we can try this out, so bear with me. Here I'm just going to uh, let PHP Storm generate my getters and setters, and then I'll have a look at them and remove any or edit any which I think should be changed or removed. So we shall go with, we'll just grab them all, then we'll have a look. Uh, what they look like, see if the names make sense, see if we actually need them. So set manufacturer, get manufacturer. Okay, that's fine. Issue date. Uh, all of these are fine. What I'm just going to do is I'm not going to have set ID because that will be done by the database. But I'll keep get ID because I'll need that in order to access the ID of the product. If I go over to manufacturer, what I'm going to do here is create a constructor which initializes the products uh, property as an array collection, an empty array collection. This products equals new array collection. Okay, that's good. Let's go and see what PHP Storms complain about. Property is only written but never read. Let's just uh, remove that inspection for the time being. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down to the bottom here and we need uh, getters and setters for our products. So, in fact, we'll just need a getter. All I want is to be able to retrieve the products for the manufacturer. And so that will do us public function get to products. See what it's complaining about here. Type is duplicated by array. Let's just remove one of these will remove array. Okay, that's good. The next thing I'm going to do is actually create the migration for my product. So I can do that with PHP bin console doctrine migrations diff. Let's run this. So it takes a while because it's creating a file. Let's go to migrations. And so we see that we have a new uh, doctrine migration file here. I'll just clean it up to make it a bit easier for us to read. It's much like our manufacturer migration, except 
A uh, couple of things to note here, you'll see that it's created a manufacturer ID, which will hold the ID of the manufacturer, obviously, and that's how we shall reference the manufacturer which is responsible for this product. And then you'll see down at the bottom here that it's created a foreign key. So manufacturer ID references the ID uh, field on the manufacturer table. So now that we've done that, let's actually go and make these changes permanent in our database. So it will be php bin forward slash console doctrine migrations. I'll bump up this uh, text for you. Doctrine colon migrations colon migrate. It'll ask you if you want to make the changes. Yes, I do. Okay, so let's go over to table plus and just make sure that that's, that has actually happened and so now we have a product table and we can have a look at our structure there so everything uh, exactly the same as what we just saw with that SQL and what we can do now is actually go back to our um, user interface here and we'll just check out the product schema and see what it says about this and so you can see all the different fields if you notice manufacturer at the bottom you'll see something interesting here it says string IRI reference and so we'll get to that shortly uh, but that is going to be the way that we reference uh, using our API how we reference the manufacturer for each product let's go and actually retrieve our manufacturers okay so we get our response back now let's study this in a little bit more detail than what we have done so far what we're creating here or what the API platform is creating for us is a hypermedia API and every resource in a hypermedia API is identified by something called an IRI which stands for Internationalized Resource Identifier and so what we're looking at here is our IRI, this ID value here and as you can see it's a URL, a URL is a valid IRI and that is what the JSON LD format uses and so to in order for our, our products to identify their manufacturer their parent manufacturer resource then we use this the IRI for that manufacturer hope that makes sense it's probably a lot of terminology to uh, take in if it's the first time you've heard this stuff but all you need to know is that in order for our uh, API in order for our products to reference their parent manufacturers using the API then we use the IRI so if we go to create a product now then this is what we need to use as a reference to the manufacturer let's go and give it a go and then hopefully that should all make sense so in products here we're going to create a product resource and if click try it out so you'll see all the fields here the one we've just been talking about, the manufacturer, this is where we need to use uh, the IRI as the reference. So I shall paste that in there. The MPN, so this can just be a string, so we'll just call it foobar uh, for the sake of just coming up with anything. The name, okay, what should we call this? Uh, so here I have a list of Acme products from the uh, Roadrunner cartoon. Isn't the internet brilliant? So. Rocket powered roller skates, that sounds like a good name for a product. So we'll go and uh, drop that in there and we'll just grab the description as well. It says, let's use skates at unlimited speed. Okay, we'll paste that in as well. So I think we've got everything there. Let's execute this. Okay, so we get a 201 response. That sounds good. That means that something has been uh, saved. And if we actually uh, study the fields which have come back in the response body so the ones we're looking at is the ID so that shows us that a new record has been created with an ID uh, MPN is foobar all the fields that we gave it there and then if you look at the manufacturer you'll see that it uses that IRI let's go over to the database and see what's been created so I'll just refresh this and then we'll look at the data okay so this is all good, we've got an ID of one, it's referencing manufacturer uh, with an ID of one, which if we look at the manufacturer table, that is the ID for Acme Core. Uh, the name is Rocket Powered Roller Skates, blah, blah, blah. All that has been saved correctly. So we have a nice working API. Uh, we're able to reference um, certain resources with other resources. I think our next move will be to actually 
add some validation to our entities to make sure that we can't enter empty strings in the database where we're expecting uh, data and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to cover in the next one. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.